this would be a fun one, Rangers Football Club. Born in 1872 and died in 2012. Now, if you are someone that may be new to the sport of football or may not pay too much notice to Scottish football, you may be quite surprised and maybe confused to hear me say that. What do you mean died? They still play now and they were in the Europa League final last year. That makes no sense. But believe it or not, 11 years ago, Rangers Football Club was put in administration and officially died. And in definition, a new club was formed still called Rangers Football Club, and began life in the third tier of Scottish football. Now, before I do start off this video, I know that some Rangers fans will not be happy by the fact I said the word died or new football club. And in fairness to Rangers fans and to show both sides and be balanced, Rangers fans have got very valid claims to show that they are indeed the same club. So I want to make an opinion. I will simply show you the facts and you can make your own opinion down below in comments. Please tell me down below, is Rangers a new club or the same club? Let's start off with why they are the same club, and that is down to their membership. This is due to when Charles Green, who was the owner of Sevco Scotland Limited, who bought the assets of the Rangers Football Club, when applying back into the Scottish Football Association, the main league system in Scotland, he did not apply a new membership, and instead was simply a transfer of the original SFA membership, which belonged to the administrators of Rangers Football Club PLC. So in the eyes of the SFA, the Scottish Football Association, by membership, it is the same club. However, opposition fans may say something differently. Now, what are the reasons of why people say that Rangers did die and that they are a new club? Well, let's begin with the terminology used and the legalities of it. The Rangers Football Club PLC was officially liquidated on the 31st of July 2012. However, much of the club's assets and intellectual property were then acquired by a £5.5 million loan by Sevco Scotland Limited, which later changed its name from Sevco Scotland Limited to the Rangers Football Club Limited. That is the official legalities of it. So, despite the fact that their intellectual property and club assets are still kept intact, hence they still keep their trophy cabinet and hence why they still keep the same badge and the same everything, the official club that they were as an organisation did liquidate and were bought by a different company. So, with that out of the way, before I get tons of comments, let's get into the video. If you guys do enjoy, then please do feel free and subscribe to the channel. I hope you guys are looking forward to this one. And if you do, please do hit that like button. Let's try to hit 3,000 likes. Thank you all so much for the incredible support on the channel. And let's get straight into the video. So who are Rangers Football Club or otherwise known as the Glasgow Rangers? That is what Rangers fans typically prefer to be known as. The fourth oldest football club in Scotland, simply founded by, you can't believe it, but by four young teenage boys, where they simply discussed the idea of creating a football club. Crazy how it works back in those days, but the more you know. Glasgow Rangers are the most successful club in Scottish football, winning the Scottish League title 55 times, the Scottish Cup 34 times, the League Cup 27 times, and have done the domestic triple on seven separate occasions. In Europe, Rangers has been very much a, a nearly club. Despite winning the European Cup Winners' Cup once back in 1972, they were runners up twice in the European Cup Winners' Cup, they were runners up twice in in the UEFA Cup slash UEFA Europa League and also runners up in the UEFA Super Cup. Europe has been very rarely kind to Rangers in their history. Now for this video, I will be not really going into the derby with them and obviously Glasgow Celtic, largely because of the massive religious aspect of the derby. I typically do not want to cross that bridge, so I'm just going to move on. What I will say, however, when it comes to Rangers and Celtic is their dominance in Scottish football. Jesus Christ, man. If we start from 2022, let's name the recent winners of the Premiership in Scotland. Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, 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 and then back to Rangers, then Rangers, then Rangers, Celtic, 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 Rangers, Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, Celtic, Rangers, 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 Celtic, Rangers, 
Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Rangers, Celtic, Rangers, Celtic, Aberdeen. Yeah, it's not been fun for teams in Scotland. The last winner of the Scottish Premiership that was not Celtic or Rangers dates all the way back to 1985. I mean, Christ. To remind you how long ago that is, um, Le Lionel Messi wasn't even born by then. So when news came in 2012 about the current situation at Rangers, it hit Scotland like a ton of bricks. And if you were Celtic, was absolutely buzzing. The first blow for Rangers came on Valentine's Day, the 14th of February in 2012, when Rangers, four points behind Celtic in the title race, entered administration and wadded up to 10 points as a consequence. The club at that time owed £9 million in pay-as-you-earn taxes and VAT to HMRC, the tax company in UK. But two months later, administrators estimated their debts have exceeded to an incredible £134 million. But in truth, the club had already been a ticking time bomb for some time. Even before Craig Wright, who was the current owner of Rangers at his time period in 2011, who took ownership of Rangers ahead of David Murray, who owned an 85.3% stake, and he bought his stake of 85.3% for, wait a second, it says £1. Craig Wright bought that majority share for £1 the previous May before they were liquidated, and it was seen as a, a bright new dawn for Rangers Football Club, but very quickly turned into a false dawn. When taking ownership, he was seen as the new man to take the cash strap club and put them back to where they belong. However, very quickly, it was found that White was far from being a billionaire and had in fact very little traceable wealth. Due to the way that he took ownership at the club, the club actually owed him 18 million and not Lloyds Bank due to the way that the takeover was structured and was also facing a tax bill in the region of 50 million pounds. But why was there so much money? What was going on? How could this happen? Well, let's look at the second person in this conversation and that is Dick Advocat. And no, I'm not being rude. That's actually his first name. In 1998, Dick Advocat took place as manager of Rangers Football Club. When he took over, the current Rangers owner, David Murray, showed his determination to regain the top spot ahead of Celtic by allowing Advocat to spend £36 million in his first season in charge. Despite losing 5-1 to Celtic that season, they went on to an easy and comfortable league title. He won the league in his first two seasons in charge, spending in the 2000 season only £6 million. However, on the other side of the city, Celtic announced the appointment of Martin O'Neill to challenge him and Rangers saw that as a threat and had another huge outlay of £30 million. And to remind you, this is not 2022. This is 2000. £30 million and £36 million is not normal, especially in Scotland at that time. Despite the sizes of their club, the money that they were receiving wasn't really outweighing the money that they were spending. In that season, they went on to finish behind Celtic in that premiership and Celtic was back in the title. And the next season spent another £11 million in that window, only to see Rangers fall behind yet again. So in December 2001, Advocat left Rangers Football Club, leaving him with quite a big kitty spent at the club. He was allowed to spend an incredible £83 million in three and a half years at Rangers. And despite that huge amount spent for the club, European success always eluded them. During this time period, they never left out of the UEFA Champions League group stages. An advocate left the Rangers with a legacy of huge, huge debts with an unsustainable policy to spend. But to play devil's advocate for advocate, potentially, yes, even though he was the one that spent a lot of the money, someone had to sanction it. He wasn't in charge of the finances and was simply spending the budget that he was given. Murray was obsessed with the quest to fulfill Rangers' ambitions in Europe. As a quote from back in 1998, which showed potentially his obsession with not only the Champions League, but also the competition with Celtic, Murray said in an interview, for every five pounds Celtic spend, we will spend 10. Clearly not just seeing the competition being on the football pitch, but also in terms of, I guess you could say, when it comes to Avocat, 
dick measuring as well. As after Advocat left, he was left quoting in 2001 saying, we got it wrong. We obviously spent far too much money. We can't let it happen again because that would be total mismanagement. Now this time between 1998 and 2001 wasn't the sole reason of why they went down, but it was the massive boulder that went down the hill and it made it even harder to stop its momentum and to stop them demolishing and destroying the football club. So that is why on the 13th of February 2012, just before Valentine's Day, they were put in administration. In April, two months later after going into admin, they estimated that they were £134 million worth of debts to the football club. And without getting too technical here, it was a massive tax bill. Later on, on the 20th of November, back in 2012, the club was up for sale. That is why when Charles Green, who was a venture capitalist, came to town, he had interest in the club. Charles Green was the preferred bidder for Rangers. As part of the takeover, Green agreed a deal of 5.5 million to purchase Rangers assets, including the club, under a new company structure. And this is when, on the 31st of July, when the Rangers Football Club PLC was liquidated, the new company, originally Sevco Scotland Limited, changed its name to the Rangers Football Club Limited. And a debt at Rangers was quite astonishing. As revealed by the Daily Record, Rangers owed 140 million between 276 different people or organizations. This included more than 55 million pounds to the club's creditors and 26.7 million pounds to Ticketus. When we're speaking of 276 people, this also involved very small and petty things like 48 pounds to Glasgow Tire Service or 40 pound old to a face painting business and 18 pound to an electrical waste recycling group in Durham near Newcastle. But questions were still to be asked. With the original organisation of Rangers being liquidated, however, with assets being bought, can he still continue onwards? Many conversations was held between all of the teams in the Scottish divisions. Initially, the Rangers applied for membership straight to the Scottish Premier League. Only for 10 of the 12 teams in that division voted against that. Then, in later debates and votings, 25 of the 30 lower league sides in the Scottish divisions also voted against them entering the second division. Eventually, Rangers were accepted into being relegated into Division 3 instead. It is also important to point out the fact that the SFA membership was essentially transferred from the pre-liquidation Rangers to post-liquidation Rangers. The same strings were also attached, including a year-long transfer ban. Of course, since then, Rangers went on to return back to the Scottish top flight in 2016 and went on to win the title back in 2021 and, of course, having a Europa League final to add on to that as well. And that is how Rangers died. However, we still need to talk about are they still a new club? Technically, officially to the Scottish Football Association, they are not a new club due to a form of membership because Sevco did not apply for a new membership. It simply transferred the original membership of the old pre-liquidated Rangers to the new one. Rangers fans will tell you that technically they are not a new club and that they refer to the likes of Fiorentina or Coventry City, both of whom were liquidated in much the same way and are continuously known as the same club now to this day. In December 2014, the SPFL chairman, Neil Doncaster, said the decision very clearly from the commission was that the club is the same. The club continues, albeit it is owned by a new company, but the club is still the same. So I must end off saying this. Rangers fans, please don't kill me. And Celtic fans, please don't kill me. I will leave it with you guys to make your own opinions. Are Rangers a brand new club? And did they die? Or were they simply a change of ownership? Of course, when it comes to the general public, when it comes to Scotland, Scottish fans see Rangers as a new club. However, legally, when it comes to the SFA, they are the same club by membership. However, when it comes to the official organisation or legalities of their group, it is a new club. I get both sides of it, so I will leave it with you guys to make your own opinion. I will not get involved, as I do not want to die. I'll see you guys next time for another video. I really enjoyed looking into this one. Of course, the uprising of Rangers has been great to see. However, 
I would like to see much more competition in football in Scotland. I do think that it makes it better for everyone involved. Yes, Celtic and Rangers, they have some great battles and they have some great fights when it comes to cup competitions and also when it comes to the league. However, from someone on the complete outside in England, of course, and, and I'm sure that they do not care about my opinion, I would love to see much more of a fight when it comes to other teams. However, financially in Scotland, they simply cannot compete. It's a shame, but... I guess I can see why Rangers and Celtic don't care, but it is what it is. I hope you guys do enjoy. Please do subscribe if you are new and also smash a like on the video. Thank you all so much for your time and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.